get stick bugged. Lol. You can't see it, but I'm I'm waving my arms like I'm a stick bug. Anyway, so today's video, since get stick bugged is now a meme, I thought I'd talk about how to actually care for stick bugs if you want to get one as a pet. But as with all pets, think very carefully and for a decent amount of time before you jump into buying one, okay? So, what is a phasmid? A phasmid is a stick bug. Or maybe I should have said what's a stick bug, and I should have said a stick bug is a phasmid. You get the idea. Anyway, there are thousands upon thousands of different types of stick bugs, or phasmids. Also known as leaf bugs, because some of them look like leaves. And in today's video, I'm going to go over how to look after them, as I already said. Okay, so I currently own two species of phasmids. I own Philium philippinicum, which is a type of leaf bug, and I own the Maclay spectre stick insect, otherwise known as... God, I can't pronounce this last name. Exterato... Exterato... Let me google it. I call it... Exteratosoma tiaratum. There we go. So, that's the other stick insect I own. Both of my stick insects will grow to be very big. Right now, they're still growing, because I've only had them a few months at this point. So I'm pretty new to the hobby. Anyway, so stick insects, they don't live a long time. They only live somewhere between six and nine months, give or take, depending on the species. They will molt to grow bigger. Typically, stick insects slash leaf insects Phasmids tend to have about nine molts in their life, and once they've reached adulthood, they will lay eggs and breed and all of that. Some phasmids are parthenogenic, which means they will lay eggs and they will hatch without a male being involved. So that's pretty cool. Makes for easy breeding if you want to breed them. The species I keep are both parthenogenic, so when they lay eggs, they should hatch, and I'll have more little stick bug babies. Yay! So that might be something you want to consider if you are thinking of getting a phasmid. Is it parthenogenic? Very common species that are parthenogenic and often kept and easily bred are the Indian stick insects, since they're cheap and easy to find. But don't just buy something because it's cheap, think about it, do you want this stick insect? Indians, while they're very popular, they're also very cute. The little babies are like little tiny sticks and they got the little legs and they're like funky little dudes. I love them. I'd love to own some Indians one day, but for now I have my Maclays and my Leafs. I love them. I love my stick insects slash leaf insects. Anyway, what else? I should talk about supplies. What will you need to take care of a stick insect? Slash multiple stick insects. People don't tend to have only one. You tend to have at least a few, depending on the species. So, your enclosure must be, and I mean must be at minimum, and I mean bare minimum, at least three times the height of your stick insect, and at least two times the width and depth. Bigger is always better. That, that sounds a bit, um... <laughs> More space is always better, so if you can do bigger enclosures than that, that's brilliant but that is a bare minimum. Different stick insects will grow up to different sizes, so do your research on how big your stick insect is going to go. The two species I have are both kept separately in separate enclosures. You cannot mix stick insects all the time. Some species can be kept together, but others cannot. The two species I have cannot be kept together, otherwise they would eat one another. Well, more like the Maclays would eat the leaves because they think that the leaf bugs are actual leaves and um, that's not very good. So they are kept separate. <laughs> so yes, I have two enclosures, both are the same size. They are 40 centimeters tall and 30 by 30 in uh, width and diameter. Width and diameter? Width and depth. There we go. What else will you need? You will need water dechlorinator to dechlorinate your tap water. Your cold tap water. Use cold tap water because, you know, warm is just a bit weird. <laughs> so dechlorinate your tap water. 
Water dechlorinator is really cheap, you get it for like fish tanks and stuff. One little bottle of water dechlorinator will last ages. I always add three drops to my squirty bottle that I use for misting. Put some drops in your water for your plants as well. Speaking of plants, your food source. Sick insects, phasmids, they like to eat plants as you might have known. They eat plants. Different stick insects will like different plants. Mine eat bramble, but they will also eat privet and ivy, I think, but you shouldn't you shouldn't feed on just ivy because it's bad for them, apparently. I don't have any ivy, so can't really tell you anything more about that. But the general consensus is don't just feed them ivy, just occasionally. Anyway, bramble is the main one, so is privet. Both are easy to find and are considered evergreen plants, which means you can find them all year round, still with leaves on, so that your stick insects can eat. Some stick insects will not eat bramble, so be aware of that. You cannot just give them any leaves, because they won't eat them. So don't be going out and picking a... Um, what's a weird plant? A fuchsia plant. We have a massive fuchsia bush. If the stick insects would eat fuchsia, it would be great, but they don't, so can't feed them it. We do have a bunch of bramble bushes, though. Be aware of what plants you have around you and what you can feed your stick insects sustainably. You're not going to run out of it, so be aware of that. Also, keep in mind how many stick insects you have. If you have too many, they will eat too quickly, and then you'll run out of plants. So keep that in mind. <laughs> I currently have three leaf insects and two maclays, so sustainable numbers, I think. Anyway, so that's enough about the food. Uh, when you have your bramble snipping off branches, there we go, when you have your bramble branches you will need to put them in water. Make sure that your stick insects cannot get into the water or they will drown. Yeah, so make sure they can't get in, put a lid on that pot, you stab a hole through a jam jars lid and put your branch through that. That's what I do, and they, the bugs are too big to be able to fall in. They get really chunky, so yeah. But uh, little nymphs might be able to squeeze through, especially with Indians. Their nymphs are really tiny. Oh, a nymph is a, a baby stick insect, or insect in general. Speaking of nymphs, they often can't get through the outer edge of leaves sometimes, especially bramble leaves. So if you have little baby nymphs, make sure to cut the edge of the leaf off for them, otherwise they will starve to death. Also make sure that they can easily find the leaves because uh, little baby stick insects are not very smart and they often can't find their food. So just uh, be patient with them and babysit them, make sure they are eating. Okay, what are you going to put at the bottom of your tank? Or whatever you're using. You can use like a fish tank turned on its side so it's uh, tall. Or you could use a Tupperware box, like a big, not Tupperware, plastic box. You know what I mean. Or some people use mesh enclosures. It depends on how much humidity you want your stick insect to have. More on that in a second. Anyway, most people line the bottom of their tank with a paper towel just because it's easy to clean up and it's very easy to spot eggs that way. If you want to control the population of stick insects in your tank, then you can remove the eggs from the enclosure and freeze them. That way they will be deactivated? <laughs> What's the word? Like, they won't hatch if you've frozen them. Never throw out eggs before freezing them. As in, make sure those eggs will not hatch in the bin. Otherwise, you'll end up with invasive species, which is not good. The other option is to have soil in your enclosure, and by soil I mean substrate that you buy from a pet shop. If you use soil from outside, then it could have germs in that could kill your bugs, so go to a pet shop and buy some actual substrate. There's tons of tutorials and videos on how to set up a bioactive enclosure, but that's what the goal would be, to have soil with springtails or wood lice in it or something like that so that the insect poop is eaten by the springtails and wood lice so you don't have to clean it 
unfortunately, that does mean that the eggs will be nearly impossible to find. Most people tend to just leave eggs in the soil and then they'll hatch and you'll have uh, more insects, but that way you can't really control the population. If that happens, you can sell your insects online or give them away to people. Just make sure they're going to a good home. And if you are posting them in the post, then make sure they've at least molted a couple of times in case of like accidents in the post. So, yes. Some stick insects require substrate, so be aware of that. Some stick insects need to bury their eggs when they are laying them, so you must be aware of what your stick insect needs. Okay, you will also need to mist your enclosure at least once a day, at least with the species I have, I mist them twice a day, since they like to be somewhat humid. I try to up the humidity if I think that one of them is going to molt, I just spray a little bit more. <laughs> But it's not going to be an exact thing, like if the humidity is a bit different each day, it's not going to be a huge problem. Since in the wild, is the humidity always going to be the same? No, so um, I, I just kind of treat it like that, and they seem to be doing okay. I should mention, if you have a mesh enclosure, humidity will be very difficult to keep up, so... I recommend getting a more um, glass plastic enclosure if you can, but it does depend on the species, so do your research on specific species before committing to one. On the topic of misting, stick insects do not need a water dish. Do not give them a water dish or they might drown in it, so don't do that. Instead, they will get all of the water they need from the misting since they'll drink the water droplets from the leaf or the side of the tank. So never give them a water dish or they might drown in it. So yes, just good to know. Okay, let's talk about handling because um, that's important too. Insects don't tend to enjoy being handled. They'll tolerate it, but they can't really comprehend your existence. Their brains are really, really tiny. So they will be a little bit spooked when you're trying to pick them up. I find the best way to get a stick insect to move when I need to move them onto their new branch, their new food, is to just like, how would I put this, like tickle the leaf that they are sat on, like, you know, tickle your fingers underneath it and then the stick insect will go, oh, what's happening? I'm going to run away. And then they'll just run onto your hand if you've angled everything right. You can also like gently, I mean very gently, tap their butt and they will go, oh what's that? And they'll run away onto your hand, hopefully. They will try to grab onto the branches instead of your hand, so just be careful. Very, very, very important is that when you are handling them, make sure all six legs are on your hand before you move. Or all six legs are not on your hand, like they are back on their branch before you move. If they still have a leg attached to you, or whatever they were on, then there's a chance you will rip it off. And that's not very good. While they do regain their legs when they are still molting, as in they might have lost a leg and then they'll molt and then it'll be back again, when they reach adulthood that's not going to happen and they will forever just have five legs instead of six or however many they've lost. While losing a leg or two won't really impact their life that much, since they will adapt and you know, they don't live that long to be honest, it's better for them to have all six. Please keep in mind that not all stick insects are suitable for beginners. Some stick insects have self-defense mechanisms such as being able to spray you with acidic smelly stuff that you should not get in your eyes or your mouth or anything like that because it's bad for you. Others will try and kick you with like their spiky legs, it can hurt a little bit. And some of them will just need very specific humidity levels, they'll need substrate and temperatures, stuff like that. So do your research on which stick insect you want to get and if it's suitable for a beginner. 
A great beginner species is the Indian stick insect. There's tons of information on them and they are very common, so cheap to get as well. So that's my recommendation to beginners. Also, Philium philopinicum, the leaf insect. That was my first stick insect, so that one's good too. A good thing about stick insects is that there are no vet bills. Yay! I mean, if your stick insect gets hurt or whatever, then there's not a lot you can do. Because it's a bug. They can't really perform surgery on it. I mean, yeah, most fatalities will happen during molting since that's the most kind of dangerous thing they're gonna do during their life in captivity, you know? Oh, I should mention, do not release your stick insects into the wild. That is bad for the environment and stuff, because that's an invasive species. I already mentioned that earlier, but if you cannot take care of your stick insect or you don't want to anymore, then find a new home for it. Never release things into the wild because that's how problems happen. Anyway, back to vet bills and stuff. So no vet bills, that's great, but if your stick insect needs to be put down for some reason such as a molt gone wrong and they've hardened in a way that means that they can't move, that's happened before to a couple of people. Uh, Bug Realms has a great video on when that happened to him and how he had to put his stick insect down. The way he euthanized his stick insect was to put it in the freezer. Yeah, I know that sounds a bit strange and stuff, but that's the most humane way, I think. Since if you stamp on it and it's still alive, then that's just traumatizing. <laughs> so that's one way you could do it without causing it too much pain. But that's, uh, that's a video that Sam over at Bug Realms has done, so go and check that video out. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description. They are a very low maintenance pet. I have to change the paper towels in mine like once a week and I give them a new branch once a week. So very low maintenance pet. They do poop a lot though. It doesn't smell, but they do poop an insane amount. <laughs> and the eggs can look very similar to the poop. So you're gonna have to stare at the poop while you look for the eggs. Never ever ever throw out eggs without deactivating them in the freezer first. I've said that a few times, but just don't do it, okay? Sure, you might have the odd accident that happens, but accidents happen and that's okay. On the topic of temperature, something else you might need if you're keeping phasmids is a heat mat or a heat pad. Phasmids like to be kept around the, what, the, the 20 degrees Celsius kind of mark. I mean, you know, give or take a couple of degrees either way, but make sure it's warmer rather than colder. Some species, such as the Peruvian Schulte, or Black Beauties, might need to be kept at a warmer temperature due to the environment they live in. So make sure you know where your insect is from, originally, and what kind of temperatures other people say they do best at. Obviously, overnight temperatures can be allowed to drop a bit, as they would in the wild, but if your house is colder, like my house is, then you might need a heat mat. I have my heat mats taped to the sides of the tank, since the bugs are up on the branches, so I thought maybe the heat'll be better there. I mean, I know heat rises, but also I don't want there to be mould growing at the paper towels, which I do change frequently, but, you know, I'm pretty new to this, so <laughs> if you know any better, then let me know in the comments, it will be appreciated. <laughs> Did I need to talk about anything else? I don't know. So, have I talked about everything I could? Probably not. But have I given you enough information to decide if you want a stick insect? No, I haven't. Go and watch more videos if you're thinking about getting one. They're cute and they can stick bug you, lol, but uh, they are still a living creature, so please be kind to them and make sure you can take care of them. Well, this has been Stick Bugs. I hope that you have learned things about bugs and if you want a stick bug, there are great sellers on eBay, there are great sellers online. There might be some at your local pet shop if you go and have a look. 
tons of different species. Do your research on the specific species you want. Never just assume that care is the exact same for different species, because it might not be. This has been a general care guide by me. Yes. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Links to all my social medias are in the description. Please do not hit the like button as that probably hurts, so maybe shake his hand instead. With that being said, hope to see you in the next one, and bye! Look, what's that? Is that you? Is that you as a little cartoon anime girl? Yeah, it is! No, nope, not happy. Nope, off she goes. Not having it, are ya? Do, do, do you not appreciate my art? Do you like it? Come here, baby. Yes, come here. I shall put you back on your leaf. And you can continue being a little bug. Oh, little baby. That's so cute. Okay, let's put you back now. What about you? Do you like it? What do you think? Not impressed? I don't think she's very impressed. Maybe it's because it's a it's a Philium Philippinicum based little character dude and this little lady is McClay's. There she goes. Get stick bugged. Oh you're so cute.